For this project, we're going to create a three quarter inch piece of pine and turn it into a nameplate. We're going to be cutting out a rectangular section, grooving a pocket, and then also laser cutting or laser engraving a phrase or a name. We'll be using three quarter inch pine stock for this and measure your stock to exact measurements using your calipers and bench ruler. And then make sure that your total part model is smaller than what you've measured. In my case, mine's about five and a half inches by two, and the stock that I measured was over six and three inches wide. The thickness of the material is going to be the thickness of my model. That way I'm not taking off any uh, part in the operation. Once you've drawn your part in CAD, move over to the design tab and go to manufacture. In my part, I've added a fillet and a pocket. To get started, we're going to click the setup button. In the first tab, you're going to click where the work origin is located. We're going to choose the top middle of our part. So if I rotate my part, we can see that I'm sitting right on the top of my part. I'm going to move to the next tab and I'm going to choose fixed size box. This is where I enter the measurements that I've taken off of the stock that was chosen. In the X direction, the longest side, my part was 6.75 inches. My depth was about three inches and my height was 0.76. When I look at my part, it should be pretty lined up with what I've created. I want my part to be in the middle of the stock so I can clamp the edges down and cut around. This way I reduce any error. In the post process, we can create a name for our project. For now, I'm gonna hit okay. Once you've created a setup, we're gonna to move to a 2D pocket. And I'm gonna use this area to cut out my pocket. I'm gonna select my first tool and you should have no tools. Choose a new end mill tool and we're going to add this in. Go to the general tab. This is going to be a quarter inch two flute end mill. Our cutter is going to be a flat end mill. We're going to change the number of flutes to two. And our diameter is going to be 0.25. If you're working in millimeters, make sure you convert or drop down your tab here so you can make sure it matches. My flute length is one inch on this tool, and that's all I need to adjust for now. I'll move to the holder tab, and I'm going to get rid of this holder. And when I select a tool holder, I'm going to select the one that matches my machine. So scroll down and look for the Tormach ER20 holder. Hit OK. That way, the CAM program understands the geometry of the tool and the holder. In my feeds and speeds, I'm going to max out my uh, spindle speed, and that's 5140. For my cutting feed rate, I'm going to bring this up to 50 inches a minute. I want to make sure my feed per tooth is fairly low, but since we're cutting soft wood, we'll move through this pretty quickly. My plunge feed rate, I'm going to bring down to 13. And that's the up and down movement, that Z axis. That's the rate of movement. The cutting feed rate is our X direction and Y direction. Under post processor, we're choosing a tool number. Let's choose tool number 12, just so we remember that it's tool 12, and we'll call this the 0.252 flute. So when it asks us to input the tool, we have a comment. We're not using coolant, so turn that off. Hit OK. You've just added a tool. Hit OK again, and now that tool appears. All of our settings, our feeds and speeds are located below in this tab. Our next step is to select the geometry. We want to select the bottom of our pocket, so make sure you select the edge and not the face. Once you've got that edge selected, you should have a chain. We'll move to the next height tab, and we'll start from the bottom. I like to go to the front view so I can see each of my heights. On the bottom selected contour, leave that. That means that it's going to go to where we selected, which is this line here. As we work our way up, our stock top and model top are actually the same. I made them the same number. I did that purposely because I'm not clearing any material off. So you can leave that zero inches. 
our feed height is when we engage. So we're gonna add a 0.2 offset. Our retract height is when we need to move off an operation. We have another 0.2 inches above, so those should be equal. And our clearance height is if we had a clamp or something holding this down, that would be another 0.4 inches above our retract height. I'm gonna leave those all standard for now. In the passes tab, I'm going to leave most of the standards. My step over here is going to be a percentage of the bit, so it overlaps itself. So the lower the number, the more passes you'll have. The higher the number, the faster it will be. So I'm gonna leave that number alone and we'll change it later. Uncheck stock to leave and check multiple depths. For this, I think I can take my bit down to an eighth of an inch at a time. So that's 0.125 and I'm gonna check use even step downs. On my last tab linking, I'm just gonna turn off my lead transitions and for my ramp, you can leave the helix in, especially since we're diving straight into the material. For the rest of the settings, leave them as they are. We'll hit OK and see what our toolpath looks like. We can see we helix into the middle of our part, and then we're going to cut out two passes to clear out this pocket. Our next step is to create another operation, and we'll choose a 2D contour. We're going to select the same tool and it should be selected already. I'll move to the next tab, and for my contour selection, I'm going to select that bottom chain. For my heights tab, I'm gonna use the front view again, and then I'm going to use my selected contour as the bottom, my stock top will be the same, my feed height will be that top height, my stock top will be another 0.2 inches above that, and my clearance height 0.4 inches above that. As far as my passes, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make sure I do multiple depths and I'll put 0.125 to be safe. And I'll select even step downs. In my linking tab, I have no lead in, no lead out, and I'm gonna leave this all as is and hit okay. I have a few passes around my part to clear it out and I have completed the basis for just the tool paths in this part. From here, we need to send it to the machine and we'll post process. So before we do that, let's select our setup, click simulate, and turn our stock option on. Let's turn our material option and I like wall paint. Now when I hit play, I should be able to see each operation. And now we can see it helixing into the part and cleaning up all of the pocket. If I turn up my speed, we can see it's doing a really good job and it should get that second pass in. And it's doing my 2D contour. And we can see in the bottom that it's all green, which means there's no errors so we can double check everything as we're working. Once your simulation looks good, we're gonna set this up for the post processor. We can right click our setup and hit post process. From here, we need the right post processor. If you don't have it listed here, we'll have to go to the internet and download it. Type in HSM posts and select the first link. Our machine is the Tormach, and we'll download the path pilot. Save that file to a location you can remember. And now cancel out your post process and re post process. When you drop down, it should be in the same folder. Make sure that you locate it. I'm gonna use this Tormach post processor. I can change the name of my program. And I like to uncheck open and see because I'll do that myself. I don't want it to automate that. Hit post and save this file wherever you need to. Once you're done, you can check your file by right clicking, opening with notepad and you can check your G code from here to make sure it looks right. We'll save that G code and send it off to 
the machine next class.